Mental Health Awareness Month, Jay. They give us a month, so we got to squeeze whatever we can in it because after that, m- mental health doesn't matter. We have a listener uh, asking. He's looking for a second opinion about his brain map protocol. At the moment, he's doing Loretta and HPN neurofeedback with a QEEG brain map every six months or so to track progress. Is a QEEG considered comprehensive for brain mapping, or should I get a SPECT, S-P-E-C-T, scan or some other type of scan to make sure I'm not missing anything? Who would like to start with that one, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> Why is always everybody picking on me? No. Um, oh. It's okay. It's okay. I, I, I don't mind... Uh, fielding awesome. questions and um, you know to start with if you're in for therapy for a presentation of some kind of a symptom that symptom being tracked is your primary outcome uh, all other testing is is what they call orthogonal uh, it's it's great to have something that kind of tracks what they're training but ultimately how you are you know, if you went in for depression, how is your depression? If you went in for inattention or hyperactivity or, or whatever you're being treated for, how did that do? That's your primary outcome. And, you know, all the other outcomes are interesting ancillary testing that kind of track things that are being trained. And those are useful. Now, uh, Spec scans are, uh, uh, they're a fabulous assessment of the brain's function. They can look deep in the brain at subcortical sites that we don't really see easily with the surface EEG, which is cortical. Um, But they, they also have a small amount of radiation associated with them. And the fewer times you do ionizing radiation, the better. Now, it's very, very, very small. But, you know, uh, radiation damage doesn't have to be very, very big. It happens at, an, at a, you know, molecular atomic sort of a level. Uh, ionizing radiation, you know, damages uh, DNA. So you don't want to do that any more often than necessary. It may be necessary to, you know, have a full evaluation at the start. Follow-up spec scans, less you know, less useful in, in some respects. Now, uh, EG, QEG doesn't have radiation associated with it. You might get goop in your hair, but uh, that, that's, that's the worst side effect uh, that, that you're likely to suffer. Um, and they do track progress. Um, if you're training something up and you're suppressing something else down, did they in fact move in the direction that you intended in the locations that you intended. And that's useful. But please track the reason that you're there. If you're, if you're being treated for depression and your numbers look better, but you're not feeling better, what the hell do the numbers mean anyway? So you, you really do need to have some method of tracking what you're there for. If it's insomnia, Track your insomnia. If you're, if you're there for epilepsy, you should have a, a, a log of your, your symptoms uh, across time. So, you know, your primary presentation is your primary thing to track. Uh, all these orthogonal or ancillary tests are handy dandy to kind of motivate and show progress of the things you're training. But your primary reason for being there is what you really should be tracking. Dr. Laura? Yeah, so, you know, we're up in Chicago and we're kind of near the Amen Clinic. And I'm also associated with another neuroscience center up here, the one that uh, Tony Hughes, we talked about uh, John Hughes, right? The EEG specialist. Uh, He consults uh, with the Amen Clinic and this other clinic I'm with. And, um, the, the thing about the SPECT, which is, you know, if you've ever seen a SPECT machine, you know, it takes up my entire uh, little office here. Uh, they're humongous in the process uh, is um, elaborate, you know, to get, get these pictures. And so, 
you know, I don't know if people are aware, if you haven't had any um, neurofeedback or any of these QEEGs, the amplifier um, uh, can fit in a bread box, if anyone remembers what a bread box, and actually half, probably half a bread box. I mean, that's how big the QEEG amplifiers are versus the spec scans. And you need a, um, a specialist to read the scans. Um, and not that you don't need a specialist to read the cues, um, but, you know, it gets costly and timely and, uh, you know, to have one of these things on site. So uh, they also require maintenance, which is interesting. So, you know, I talked to my colleagues there, you know, they talk about, you know, how much it costs A, to buy the thing and then B, to maintain it and all the chemicals and all the, the uh, upkeep of the thing. And so, you know, I'm with Jay on the, you know, kind of take these scans with a I'm going to talk out of both sides of my mouth, take the scans with a grain of salt. Like, okay, they, again, they're statistical in nature. You're comparing these res results against a normative database. And I, I don't remember exactly how many people are in the normative database per age, but I know it's a handful. It's, it's really not that many. And I don't, I don't know if that, you know, invalidates it or validates it, but, um, you know, the, the point is, yeah, are, you know, what are the symptoms? Are the symptoms associated with, with the scans? You know, is there another reason that, you know, that is or isn't happening? And then you're trying to track their progress, right? And exactly what Jay said is, yeah, okay, we're going to you know, get a baseline or get a, you know, starting point and we were looking for progress. And then, you know, I had, a, had one of these yesterday where, you know, they, they've gotten their training with neurofeedback and they've been there for X number of sessions and they're reporting symptoms that are improving, like they're getting better. The attention is better, the, the, the um, follow through, the less impulsivity, et cetera. You know, the mom's, you know, saying good things. And we look at the, the before and after scans and there doesn't look, you know, you look at the scans and it's not looking like progress, but that doesn't mean the progress isn't happening. So, you know, sometimes they're spot on, you know, sometimes they do kind of fall in line with a normative database and sometimes they're outliers. And, I always talk to people about statistics that, you know, just because you're an outlier, you know, you're, you're out on the end of the bell curve doesn't mean you don't exist. I mean, how many times do we go to a doctor and say, oh, I have this ache or pain or this symptom, and the doctor says, oh, that can't be. I've never seen that before. That's not right. Or that's not a symptom or a side effect of the medication. That doesn't happen. I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> you know? So I, I think we have to use our common sense a little bit, despite the statistics and these double blind studies and the normative database, you know, et cetera. So anyway, long answer. And, uh, you know, there, there's a time and a place, you know, for spec, probably, like you said, you go deeper into the um, subcortical structures. Um, and, and we talked last time that, you know, it's questionable whether the new Thatcher uh, uh, imaging can, you know, talk about monopolar structures in the subcortical areas and, you know, whether that, that can actually grasp, uh, you know, what we're looking for image wise. Um, it's compelling. I've seen, I actually have that software, the, the, uh, you know, you can look at supposedly the, the uh, thalam, thalamus and the hypothalamus and hippocampus and hippocampi. And uh, so it's compelling to look at those things and, you know, whether those are accurate depictions, I guess that's still debatable. Um, so, you know, long, long, long way around the, the block here. Um, uh, you know, for, for me and you're coming to see us, I'd say, let's get the cue and uh, a, a symptom, a written symptom checklist of what the people are reporting and, and track. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Jay. Um, yeah, I, I, I tend to agree with all of that. Uh, I, I don't mind seeing somebody have a spec scan as an initial evaluation. Um, uh, uh, follow, follow up again, uh, very, very small incremental additional risk. I mean, the half-life of the, the, the uh, first of all, for a spec scan, you have to inject radiation. Uh, it's, it's either uh, radioactively tagged oxygen or radioactively tagged sugar and uh, uh, glu glucose. And th those end up being absorbed into cells that are busy doing something. So they, they inject it, they wait a period of time and then see where in the brain did it get taken up and where in the brain didn't it get taken up. So they see areas of activity and inactivity. And yeah, that's, that's very useful. Um, uh, there, there are uh, times that it helps with a differential diagnosis between a couple of different presentations. Um, and again, it's, it's a very, very, very small amount of radioactivity, but 
that doesn't take much radioactivity to end up having a potential problem. So, you know, total life dose is what people look at. And, you know, CT scans are more, uh, MRIs don't have it. Um, that there's, there's different kinds of studies that give you different kinds of answers. A functional MRI gives you deep brain um, uh, identification of things. It's way expensive, um, but it, it's also um, not with ionizing radiation. It, it has um, uh, 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 electromagnetic fields, but it doesn't have ionizing radiation. So um, as I would focus on the symptom that brought you to the therapist. I would find some way to track that. Now, as a neuropsychologist, you have testing and more testing and some testing on the side. So you can find a few tests probably that all kind of point at the symptom cluster that they're presenting with. Uh, and, and you'll be able to track their presentation. Uh, if it's insomnia, the Pittsburgh sleep inventory. I mean, there's a whole bunch of various tests to, to, that can track your symptom. And I think that's your best bet for figuring out whether there's success or not. That's the reason you're there. You're not there to have X number of more microvolts of some particular frequency band. That, that's all fine and dandy. You can track those things that are being trained, but the symptom that brought you to the therapist is what you should be tracking.